we all know formats uh, who do not leverage any face, any gestures, pretty much the Khan Academy videos. I don't want to be too tough on them. Love Khan Academy, obviously had some people at our workshop two days ago. At the same time, it's curious that they do not leverage any video or face in their videos. And then again, you might try some formats in the last few years, st standing in front of a green screen, you tried some picture in picture anecdotes, something like that. And then again, to close my anecd anecdotal evidence and my intro, we have something that is very successful on the internet, on social media outlets, that's not catering any lecture face again. So I was wondering, can I, can I test that? And anytime a PhD student has no clue, but wants some clue and some answers, uh, they conduct experiments and that what we did in a field test and we were, we were retesting some effects, which I would like to introduce in the session and talk. We is myself, Terry Sobel and Professor Meinl. And let me iterate a little bit what the lecture condition, me, and the slide condition means. And I will introduce the Zoom chat as well. So keep your questions posted. What, what does it mean to do research on our platform? We have an Uncle Ben, big power, big kind of responsibility type of situation because we own the platform. We own the user data, not the users, important distinction. But we own what we build and we are responsible for it in the same way. And in, in that regards, and the World Health, Health Organization is using our platform. If you want to know more about the business side or the model behind that, uh, feel free to reach out to Dr. Schaubitz. Tom, could you just raise your hand? That's, that's him. He's like the key account manager. And we also do research because uh, we as researchers want to leverage those technical functionalities and within our own platform, we have programming courses and they're well established and we teach Python and Java courses. Within that Java course, we thought let's do an, and I think the US American curriculum would call that the CS201, the Java 201 course with all the fun stuff. After you realize how a function and a method and syntax works, you want to discover trees and queues and stacks and hash maps and recursion. And I come back to recursion because that was the core concept I did research with to test out whether it's, it's necessary and is there any value to incorporate a lecture phase or not. What this whole slide should tell you is that we have somewhat of a high stake exam because I do not have high school students or students who have to attend the class for a grade or for ease or yeah credit. But I have rather older people, 40 to so 60 are our learners age, and we have a lot of them. I think, um, yeah, multiple thousands, and that course, and I can't get to the scaling effect of that in, a, in on the next slide. But I have people who allegedly have a computer, they have pre-existing knowledge, they are intrinsically and extrinsically motivated because they can get some sort of a certificate, not a university degree, and I'm reiterating that so intensively because by German law, I would not be allowed to do that kind of experiment with an actual credit class. I'm not sure about the US, but we had that fairness argument in the workshop two days ago. I cannot test something that I don't know whether it's good or bad in terms of the grade and the feedback outcome in, in a class. And once again, it doesn't scale. You usually just pick one. And I wanted all of the three, and that's why we conducted the research, uh, the research in that way. This slide will tell you the main three things I wanted to focus about. How is how's the existing pretest? Uh, how does students think how good they know recursion? And we did that way before the course, so they did not access any material. And we did only uh, we ask about recursion and the hash maps and all of the other curriculum contents before, so they could say, "Yeah, I have no clue whatsoever." That's like the one. And then we ask, uh, the highest level was, I, I think I can teach it. I was like the very, very confident answers. A lot of our students or learners, I rather say, do four out of five, five out of five. They were quite confident, which meets our requirement because they already said, yeah, I already know Java. Let's, let's get this 201 course done. Another perception or another 
yeah, scale was how, how well is it perceived and there was a pre-existing uh, literature on that and you will have a good time finding literature on that. And Rene Kitschek, for instance, used some scales in that regard. How good is it perceived? A uh, recent IEEE from Nung and Pritzelbleck did the very same scale and I'll show you some results in a second. And lastly, I wanted to, to post-test because it's a well-established measure according to the literature reviews I read. And in that, we did a recall test. How good can you remember things about recursion and how good can you implement it? Because a CS degree is received as a very practical degree. And if you know about recursion, but you're not able to implement it, you will have trouble on the job market and the real life implementation, I, I, I would assume. The theoretical CS students usually get uh, Ballistics, if I say that, but uh, yeah, the applied ones don't. Okay, so uh, yeah, and the, the scaling thing, once again, um, 3,000. At one point, I had to cut off. At one point, the, the latest date of submission was reached, and I had an earlier start of the, of the pretest. And I think Steve Ritter calls that the curriculum embedded experimental design. Yeah, just an inside joke from the workshop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I will reiterate a little bit and I will nerd a little bit of my video equipment for a second here. Allow me to do that because while you have a, a good time finding existing literature, you will have a hard time to find the linked and uh, the appendix of learning content. Maybe it's a Google Drive link, maybe it's somewhere on Coursera, which, which is fine obviously, but I want the analysis, I want the results and the actual learning item that it's based on to find out for myself or maybe do a meta review and what's or not. And what we decided to keep everything as equally as possible, but still scale, it, rigor and relevance is, is our, our fighting here. What we did, we wrote a script, we reviewed that not so blindly internally, and we tweaked it and optimized it to make it possible to be received with the audio only, AKA the slides condition. Uh, imagine if I just leave the room with that microphone and I give the rest of the talk outside, I'm pretty sure the laptop usage would be would increase, which, which is fine for live interaction. But at the same time, I could use gestures, but no props in the, in the video. And I, and I challenge you that to go to lis22.steinbeck.io. It's a drive link that will stay there. I promise you that. And I'm on record, I think. And to test out whether you can see whether I used the teleprompter or not, because I did. And we, we, we created that so that the audio slide, the audio track is not similar, not alike, but identical. And it was very important to us to keep that, to, to defend that internal validity as much as possible. So only the visual experience would differ. Just do a quick media analysis. Uh, once again, sorry, it's me. <laughs> but what, what, have you, what do we have here? Gu et al, one of the most cited and downloaded paper in our community, and one of the earliest articles, maybe that correlates. It says, uh, please make, uh, keep it short. I said, yes, sir, we will do that. Dr. Janine Reutemann said, use an informal recording setting. That's my home studio setup. So that's what, what we went with. Uh, yeah, red and blue with the US flag is really just unconsciously. I did not choose that actively, if I may say. Redundancy principle. If I connotate a text, I only did that with what was very sad and uh, yeah, in, in, on the line, but it's, it's German content. So in that sentence, I, I explain how faculties work in a recursive fashion. Direct eye contact. And that brings me to the Zoom camera. The same effect could be used if I address you in the Zoom. And yes, after two years, it's still strange to teach into a camera lens and I see some noddings here and there. It, it is strange, but at the same time, we will see later that it did indeed yielded a higher response and the audience or the, my learners felt more directly addressed. But I get to some downsides later. One primer scene, Kim et al said, do not change, do not go outside, do not have an environmental change. A, a, a few zooms here and there, a little bit of flip, but I kept the scene quite steady. And once again, in four minutes, yeah, I'm not Roland Emmerich, so this is not a Hollywood movie, obviously, but we try to keep the production value and it was quite an ex 
expensive video, if I might say, compared to our other videos, uh, as, as good and high as possible. So does it matter? And that brings me to the research question, and I usually present my RQs directly with, an, with a result. Yes, it does in terms of the recall scores. And that is something that uh, Anton and uh, Wenko found out recently as well. So that's like the retesting part of my hypothesis. It was confirmed by a t-test. It was confirmed by an ATE that up to a quarter point, which yields a 5% in the test, it does matter. At the same time, it also does not. Great, right? Like ask a research question, get a maybe, cool. It, it doesn't in the transfer task. And I only know what people do in my open HBI tab. I know the clicks, I know the timings, I know the hints. We, we all know that. But I do not know what they do on the Stack Overflow page to the left or that Dr. Go tab to the right, which once again proves the ecological validity because that's how a CS job should be done, not only in, in, in one tab. The other question was, is it perceived better? And that brings me to the existing literature once again. The great in, in German, uh, uh, very good, is uh, sehr gut. That's a one in our uh, system. Um, deficient, sounds, that, that's, yeah, that sounds very bad, is a, is a ungenügend or mangelhaft, something that, that's a six. So the average grade for me as a lecturer, for my lecturer treatment condition was 1.8, pushes you into A minus territory, so to speak. The slides condition was 2.1, 2.2. And once again, only a slight diminish of, of difference, but still a statistically significant one. The right picture is a, a sentence completion, which means, do you think seeing the lecturer over not seeing him does is helpful, useful, pleasant, whatsoever. Highly positive connotated, I would, I would say. At the same time, it's interesting to me that the slides people, or these, my slides learners say, nah, it doesn't matter. No. But they haven't seen me, have they? So at, this, at one point, they have, a, they have a perception about that. And maybe some people are like, have had the fear of missing out. Like, hang on, there was a lecturer. I, 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 I haven't seen a lecturer. Um, at one point, some people were like really engaging and sent me mails like, oh, that's, that's a great format, please continue. And I'm saying, yeah, but that's, uh, we, we'll just keep that as an experiment. So let's keep that between you and me. Um, welcome to my study. Yeah. Once again, the same curve in terms of very, very positively connotated and only a few negative connotations. I added does not matter because I think le my professional learners have an opinion about that. Um, that's once again a, a distribution that was already seen at the uh, Ning and Prinzipleck IEEE open access paper, which was very interesting to me because we followed that same distribution. That differed as well. So that focus, that camera lens, and oh, maybe that's a practical implica implication in your Zoom lessons, maybe for the next winter, we don't know what will happen. Talking to the lens does, does matter and talking to, to the students by and, and, and addressing them directly because that was one of the only statements besides the grade that showed a statistically different yeah, outcome because it, it mattered and that, that was very interesting to me. The same question of, nah, uh, I do not feel that the speaker was in the same room and I don't really think the Zoom people do not think that they're at their homes right now. But if I would ask you right now here, you would, yeah, because I'm virtually and physically standing in that room. Thank you, questions and greetings from Potsdam. This is in the room. I take it as a good sign. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. It's very, very fun. Um, I don't know if I missed it. Uh, it, it. Did you examine whether there was a difference in grades as a function of whether you they were delivered slides or um, a lecturer? Like in the recall assessment, it was it was uh, categorized as a quiz and. That, so that was the difference that, yeah. The yeah. How did yeah. you define the transfer? Uh, in the transfer, we have an auto grader system and 900 people auto uh, completed the recursive function. 
function and I ask them, yeah, to the paper, I ask them to implement a Fibonacci sequence shifted by once, or by one, not by once, by one, and only 90, uh, 33 individuals were not able to solve it. Only one got one point out of two and 33 out of 900 does not show a yeah, significant difference. But the overall, like it was uh, part of a uh, four-week MOOC, as I said, and uh, I, we, I did not check for the final grade because it was optional content, was still a high, yeah, high stake exam, as good as possible. So we, we incentivized the people to do it, but you could still excel and get your A in the course because we still have a fair, man, fair issue and uh, uh, treating everybody equally, although we tried to do an experiment. Um, I'm kind of curious about the video format a little more. Um, sure. For instance, um, did you did you show like did you show any coding and still have yourself like in the lower corner or during um, did you have no text at all during the video or was it like you accompanying the text or what's the what was um, can you talk a little more about sort of the when you say YouTube style to me. Um, I mean, like the red and blue lights and the, you know, the good lighting and all that. Um, but <laughs> yeah. for instance, like some of the videos, you know, the person's in the corner, but they're in a box. Sometimes there's just the outline of the yeah. person. Sometimes it's just them talking and no, you know, can you talk a little bit more about your format? Thing? Yeah, sure. I always, I always try to, yeah, I always try to get the nerdy video stuff all the way. 30 FPS, 1080p, you know, 48 kilohertz. Um, was a full screen talking head approach. If I had annotations, they were chosen carefully. And it always was representing what I were just saying. And the text was once one-to-one -one as on the slides. So the text did not vary it whatsoever. I showed pseudo pseudocode in terms of, okay, let's have a function there. We call it, oh, that's the recursive effect. And then everything starts till I reach my base case. And a minute before I defined the base case, yeah. And besides that, I, there was no picture in picture because the two primary theories over here is social presence. How good is a person be seen in a media or in a medium and the split attention effect. And I wanted to yeah, maximize the first, the social presence effect. And I want to minimize split attention as good as possible. And there was no purpose of the full screen. And that's what I was saying um, on lis22.steinbeck.io. Even if you do not speak German, you you will see what 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 we did and uh, what what I produced. Um, yeah, does that answer you, the question? Okay. Yeah, no person whatsoever on the slide. I used our masters or, or PowerPoint master. Nothing too fancy, and it was even more work to after we got the script done. I, I talked into the teleprompter and having some YouTube video experience in the background and a teleprompter at home and. All of that stuff helps, but at the same time, um, then I had to create slides, which was almost more effort. Um, but the money discussion is a is another topic. Yeah. Hi, just to Craig, show the you are. Craig Zillis, University of Illinois. Um, so, what are the takeaway points? So, I, as an instructor, have a limited amount of time mm -hmm. to create this content for my students. What should I do based on what you're finding? Have a what what other researchers called a strategic embodiment. Show yourself in the beginning. I would say maybe at, at the ending or in the in the middle section. Show yourself at once so that your audio track is connotated with a person. Uh, the diminishing returns. I, I cannot speak to that, but there surely are diminishing returns of showing yourself all the time, and. Um, if you want to, what my data indicates is that if you want to perceive in a higher quality, uh, show yourself because that's what the perception uh, told me. At the same time, I use quite high quality con um, materials and equipment. So if I'm, I would think that if you do the same with an internal microphone, you would not re yield the same results. So a dedicated video and studio setting surely is the necessary condition for that. And just a second quick follow-up. If, sure. if we are we have a group of faculty that are teaching the same course, but we want to use the same set of videos across multiple instructors, uh, does that change 
how we might approach this or any thoughts on that? On a, on a practical sense, I, I wouldn't think that would change that because you could, I mean, a flipped classroom environment might use curated content, used outside content. And especially if your faculty is, is known among students, if it's a total stranger, yeah, that, that might be different. Um, I couldn't swap people because it would threat my internal validity, right? So I kept it with, with only me, but we surely have in that course, um, overhand camera scenarios, an interview session, people talking alone, um, so, something like that. But in a practical sense, I, I wouldn't, I, I would think that it doesn't hurt to change people, although that might be not your primary lecturer who's conducting the rest of it. Our research or our teaching team were seven people, six researchers and a TA. So we change people and persons as well, and I incorporate other videos of mine, but this was the only experimental setting. Okay, we have a question in Zoom. Rebecca, please, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, um, my question is, I, I'm a former um, K-12 teacher, so one of the things that we were taught as a, when we were first taught to teach was that if we are using a board or giving an example, you take your eyes and you look at what you want the students to look at. So in your presentation or in the, the video that you created for students and you had a visualization, did you, how did you indicate to students that they should look at the visualization, whatever it is? I had visualization in terms of gestures. For instance, I said, you need two things for recursion. You need, and then I, virtually just made a peace sign and said, okay, you need two things. First thing, second thing, I had some, what we would call social cues in terms of that's important. But since my intonation did not change, that same that's important is also on the slide track while appearing at the exact moment I want the people or want my learners to realize, hey, we are doing that till the base case in the recursive, yeah, till the one thing is reached. Uh, so I try to underline it with intonation and with text in the slides condition and with an, an, yeah gesture emphasis, if you will, in the lecture condition. But your eyes still focused on the students. So you were still like looking at the camera at the yeah. students. Your eyes didn't go to the visualization. Thank no, you. Uh, and yeah, yeah, true. And that's why I think the I was felt that I was di addressed directly question differs in those two treatment conditions. Thank, Thank you for you. that question, Rebecca. Yes, um, so you, you found that there was no difference. There was a difference in the recall test and no difference in the application test. Yes. What is your explanation for that finding? I think people think outside when they're not at their laptop. They think about the CS problem. They think about how they have done it. Maybe a little bit along the lines what we just heard about the progress donation discussion. Um, at the same time, the time bound for the recall test was 12 minutes, which was, which was very fair for a five-point optional quiz. But you couldn't leave and take your dog for a walk at the same time. So I bounded <laughs> that time. And at the same time, um, the, the trans transfer, uh, tran transfer assignment had no maximum point, but we have some interventions uh, for that. And when I checked for the average time, it was in line with the other assignments. And that's uh, yeah, how I think th that happens. At the same time, it might be a, a follow-up. If, if you're quite tricky with unit tests, you saw that there was a little bit of a helper uh, testing over there that I said, okay, you're using, your, your, your result is correct, but you're using a for loop. This is, this is not what this is about. We, we want a recursive and we want something like an if, if clause uh, stacked together. And so I nudged them into that direction. And at the same time, maybe the transfer, talk, uh, transfer ex exam was too easy. But at the same time, 33 out of 900, you kind of want that in a MOOC, yeah. Does it answer the question? She's nodding, I th I so. I think so. I mean, I think what you're saying is that you don't think that the transfer test actually uh, picked up any difference between the two conditions because uh, of other variables. But yeah, life about, happens, so to speak. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I cannot control. I, I, if, I, if I want to do that, I have to change them to a desk and then I couldn't speak at learning at scale because I had like 30. That brings me into HCI territory. Uh, I have a question. Sure. 
you said that you don't want to talk about cost, but I want to bring that back. More that cost effort. Compared with producing normal videos for MOOCs, how much do you consider this is extra? It's two times harder, three times harder? Uh, yeah, the, the, so it's about the cost. Uh, usually a, a, a production minute costs like seven to eight minutes in, in real time. If, if you have a setup that's like, like our experience, um, let alone the, I don't want to flex too hard, but let alone the camera and the studio and the computer we are using for that. And our OpenHPI studio is in the upper five digits. Maybe Tom says about thing that, but it's fair to say that the studio we have and the thing I think uh, I accumulated as a PhD student in, in a video based uh, teaching um, is not what I would recommend every teacher in the world. I mean, the company Black Magic would be happy about that, but I, I wouldn't imagine that's like economic. Um, I, I cannot tell you what the production minute costs, um, but let alone that project followed me for over 10 months. So if you take your average PhD salary in a way and multiple people were involved, um, those were like four intense and ex expensive minutes. But at the same time, the course is still offered in a self-paced fashion. Um, but maybe maybe two to three times of, of the actual. Um, at the same time, we experimented with a little more formats, not in a sense to write a study about it, but just to see what how people perceive it. And buying a tripod and a century stand for a hundred bucks from BHP photo and an overhead cam for $600, just to do some cost drop name dropping here, um, did do some trick. For instance, we had some a quick sort um, analysis and instead of showing it by a PowerPoint, I used actual objects and sorted that through the quick sort algorithm in a physical way. And that did the trick and was was it was quite easy, but at the same time, people were easy to impress. Maybe sounds bad, but our learners were like, oh yeah, that's a new one. Let, 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 let's keep that one. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, thank you for your time. Next presenter.